Good morning, artists. How are you today? Stephanie coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River in the Six Rivers National Forest, not far out of Willow Creek, California. I like how that sounds. Still working on my morning coffee. All right. Um, I was going to bring you back to show you how I did this, but I can just flip it over. These are just the black gessoed pieces. And when you put that, so this design here that I'm getting makes me want to put the tape on everything and create those lines because how beautiful does that look? All right, this is a fired brick distressed oxide. And thank you, Faye, for the um, suggestion to go with the distressed oxide. I was contemplating whether to use it or not. And I've got to sneeze. <laughs> Oops, sorry. The, uh, oh, hummingbird's back. The heater just went off. I'm all over the place. Okay. <laughs> Not unusual, right? So I put one coat already on of the fired brick. And as you know, with if you've been following along with this book, I use fired brick often, and I really love the earthiness of the color, and um, I use it in the um, sprays a lot, the spray inks, and I also use it in the um, distress ink pads. This is wild honey. So I'm just trying to bring in, wow, that's going to be so cool with that. Look at that. Oh, see, I don't know what I'm doing. And then I come up and it's like, well, I know that I want these colors because this is the color theme that's been running through the book. And so we're going to have uh, this happening. Wow, that's going to be excellent. Now, of course, with this being Distress Oxide, it does come off, and we are going to go back through and set it again with our Mod Podge. Um, it would be kind of cool to check and see if we could find something else to um, set this with so that we don't lose this intensity of color. But wow, look at how beautiful that just alone is. Oh, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Now, this is, of course, contaminating my Distress Oxide. I understand that. I know that. If you do not want to do that, do not do it in this manner. Okay? Um, and then I have to go through and do that with all of these guys. So I'll bring you back in a second when I bring in the next color. So I don't know if this is going to make any difference, but I just realized that... Um, I'd kind of wanted to keep, it probably doesn't make any difference, but I want to keep things consistent. And um, so the distressed oxide that's on the back side of this is going to most likely um, affect what I put underneath of it, you know. Um, <sighs> But I want to have it be consistent. So two pages this way and two pages this way for our flips, right? It just makes sense that we're doing it. Um, and of course, we're going to glue those other pieces on top of one side when we sandwich in our um, artwork, our images, right? There we go. Oh, I love that. Okay, so here I have two, one for, um, two for each side. And I've made them consistent. It just is taking the extra little bit of time to make sure that I'm doing it correctly. Okay, I'm going to go through and color these. Okay, just a quick recap here. We have used uh, Wild Honey 
and fired brick. Now, part of me thinks I should have used the fired brick last because that's kind of the color that I want to have the most prominent. And after I put on the wilted violet and the salty ocean, it has kind of um, mulled down that fired brick. However, that is, you know, kind of the undercurrent theme through here. Um, so, and here I did all of these guys. So I've left the yellows a little bit brighter on some of these. Not necessarily intentionally, it's just how um, the paint has gone down. Trying to kind of create a spotlight effect or a, a lights in the air effect. Um, and using colors that uh, you know go with the theme of the book. Um, I'm using a lot of different colors, as you can tell, uh, but I want it to have a rustic feel. As you see, I could easily stop right here, though, and this would give me a great look, um, but I think we can make it better from that. So I'm making sure to get into the creaks and crevices. I love this uh, texture. Um, if you're doing this at home, you might consider doing more of that tape texture because I think that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm not going to go back and do it now, though, because I have, you know, I don't need to do it, honestly. It'll be interesting enough here as it is. But again, I'm still trying to think about mm, spotlights and uh, circus lights and the color of what's going to be in this tent, right? Kind of dingy, kind of dark, bits of highlights here and there. And once, once the um, Mod Podge goes over the top of it, it really does change the texture, right? And it'll change the colors. The, these, this will not be the end color of this project whatsoever. It's amazing how much it does truly change. So these are all contaminated. That's okay with me. Uh, I think I can just kind of scrape them off a little bit, wipe them off. It'd probably be a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. But I probably should do it. So later on when you hear me go, oh gosh, I wish I would have done that. This would have been the stage to do it. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking for Mod Podge. This is the Mod Podge and I'm looking for my brush. Where's my brush at? What brush do I want to use? Where's my brush? I'll just use this guy, this old friend. This guy's pretty beat up these days. So we're gonna take um, a fairly light dry brush here, right? Uh, there's no water on this brush at all. And don't smear it or you will not get this uh, result at all. We're just tapping it down to set the Mod Podge, or to set the Distressed Oxide. You know the words I want to use. Those words, those pesky words. So see that fired brick? See what that does? Oh, it's so pretty. I'm just gonna go through and make sure that everything is covered. We're not dragging that brush through it. We're just popping it on top, okay? And the streaks that you leave in the mod, in the, in, in the, the streaks that you leave will come across. You will see those. These streaks will absolutely show up at the end. Do not get your Mod Podge too thick or you will truly get this uh, kind of gummy effect which is not appealing to me at all. I got a hair in there. Got my hair pulled back today, thankfully. Drives me a little crazy. I do like keeping some of the black in there. Uh, I think that will be good for the composition. And I'm trying to take out my fingerprints, but you know how that goes sometimes. It's hard to take out every single fingerprint.
and I'm being cognizant of what's happening here, what's happening throughout the, the piece, kind of watching all of this good stuff. hair is still stuck on my hand somewhere. <laughs> now, I do want that texture. And that fired brick came out just the right amount. Let's get those lines. We want to keep it a dynamic composition. So we want to try to push those lines like this here. See how those go like that? Um, I'm wanting a dynamic feel. My bangs are going to drive me absolutely nuts. I feel like taking my scissors and going, chomp. Oh, they drive me crazy. Okay, so I'm going to just do this uh, 10 more times. 20 more times. How many surfaces do I have to do with this? All of the backs. These four larges. It's a little bit much... Um, Mod Podge there. But the brush itself is leaving um, streaks in it, and I like that. That's what I'm going for. If you don't want the streaks, then don't do it this way. You, know, you can smooth those out. Again, very dry brush. The streaks are caused because of the separation of the bristles. It's, you know, it's funny, the, the more that you learn about a product, which, you know, just doing those, um, the Seraphine project really taught me even more about distress oxides. And I've used distress oxides like this from the very beginning with a Mod Podge over the top of it. So I knew that this worked like this, but as I perfect the skill, you know, it, it's just like, uh, you know, just like painting with watercolor or whatever. Um, the more that you do it, the better you become at it, and the better you are at um, manipulating the product and all of those good things. Love these colors. They're absolutely gorgeous, and they work really, really nicely together. So what I will most likely do after these all dry is um, I'll do a quick edging probably with the Timber Brown stays on. Um, just because I think that that would serve the piece really well. Oh, we've got hair in there. Hair. Oh, get the hair out. You don't need the hairs. They are not our friends. Okay, so I'm just going to go and make this work. And I know that these colors are a little bit um, different and bizarre and uh, cool. It got a little bit heavy through there. I wish it would have been more like that in there. Which, actually, let's... Uh, what the heck is that sound? Let's see if we can't... Pull up some of that. I bet we could. Okay, I'm putting my water, my paintbrush into water, which uh, I don't know if I really wanted to do that because then you've got to dry it out. So you are the master of your environment. If you want to keep this scene better, then you just have to go through and attempt. I mean, I didn't know if that was going to work if I did that. And it did work. And that's cool. It, um, uh, it, it doesn't look exactly like I would like it to look. So that's just water in there. So let's see if we can't pull 
a little bit more in here. Let's just add in just a touch more color because it's kind of a green mush color, which you're going to get, right? We know this. We're, we're playing with uh, colors that, you know, blue and yellow will make green. Uh, blue, yellow, and red will make brown. Uh, blue and orange will make brown. And we need to talk about color mixing and all of those things. I want to start a new series uh, about, you know, really discussing the properties of color and art and um, what different things do and but actual conversation about art because it only makes your artwork better. It does not detract, um, you know, when you know the properties of color, the properties of proportion, the properties of creating depth. All those lovely things. Very, very important to a good artist. Okay, I like that. Uh, I probably did not need to do that. I don't like that as much as I like, say, for instance, this. But uh, once we just take that um, stays on, actually, I could put stays on right over the top of that and kind of pick up those edges. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. All right, I'm going to go cut off my bangs, and then um, I will bring you back once I have the rest of these covered and they're dried a little bit more. All right, we'll chat soon. Bye. Um, wow, this is, this is awesome. You know, Distress Oxide is a great <laughs> product. It really is a cool thing. Um, and I was so happy when I found it almost a year ago, a year ago, right out a year ago. I'm so new to mixed media um, that, you know, finding the products was so fun. My goodness, this is cool stuff. You don't have any of this type of thing in the fine art world. They don't know what they're missing. All right. I could paint whole pictures with this stuff. You see, this is really beautiful through here. And this has all the same colors. So everyone is individual what happens with it. Um, hi guys, I'm back again. Okay, so here's where they've started out and here's where I'm making them to be. Um, before and after. And uh, I'm just distressing this with um, mm, Gathered Twigs Distress Ink is what I'm using. And uh, I'm kind of using a combination of techniques, but I actually like this better than using that. When you use this thing, it, it puts it all over the place instead of just leaving our highlights and our lowlights. Um, so I'm kind of digging just doing it with my fingers, although it's, you know, much more time consuming to do it this way. I think it gives a better, um, look, you know, I'm just kind of trying to edge and definitely making sure that I'm getting into the in parts. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, I haven't done these yet, so I'm not really sure. We're experimenting here to see if we can get the same type of look. It's a thicker board here. It's not just the thin paper. The generator is still going out there. I can hear it. Uh, we had a power outage that started yesterday morning and um, Luckily, there's a generator on the property, and very happy about that. It kicked automatically in, but uh, the power is still off, so um, thankfully, thankfully I had it. We had a massive snowstorm uh, yesterday, and um, it was crazy. 
So look at how beautiful that uh, turns out. Now we have to realize with Distress Ink, it is water soluble. So uh, if we put Mod Podge over the top of this or anything like that, it's going to move. Yeah, try not to leave your fingerprints behind. However, uh, well, my fingerprints are in the system already because I had a securities license and with securities you have to be um, fingerprinted. True story. be vetted. They have to know that you don't have any type of criminal background or you don't get a securities license, you know. It's good. You know, they're making sure that your stockbrokers and uh, stockbrokers aren't criminals or at least haven't been caught as criminals. <laughs> I think that looks pretty darn cool. I think that looks pretty darn fabulous right there. Uh, it is sticky, but what we're going to do is after we get, oh, we probably want to do that before we get, we want to set this somehow. Um, that stickiness, that, uh, yeah, because these will all stick together right now too. The weight of them will stick. So we don't want to stick. No sticking. Okay. Ugh. I found a, a Yeti coffee cup. It keeps my coffee warm. Hot. For much longer. Much more bearable to drink than I hate cold coffee. I don't understand iced coffee. I've tried it numerous times and I just don't like it at all. Kind of gruesome, in my opinion. But lots of people love it, I know. Give me a iced tea over an iced coffee any day. Right? So we're definitely grunging this up vintaging it. We're leaving um, some areas that do not have ink on them uh, to give us variety and interest without being overbearing. Um, you know, this is going to be our main frames for our images. So we want to make sure that these are done well. You know, this is it. This is, this is, I might actually come back through with some fired uh, brick again. I wonder if I could just use some dis distress spray. I'm wanting to bring back a kind of the redness in some of this. And, um, you know, this fired brick that I have on here originally kind of went a little pink for me. Um, that it's horrible, but it's also not great. So, but we do not want this stuff to move. So, and we're gonna have such cool things that we do with it. Just wait and see it come together. I'm so excited that I'm finally getting to this stage of it because, wow, this is a long process. And you guys have been with me through all of it and I really appreciate your patience. Uh, you know, this is a, a massive layout. Um, a massive, massive, massive layout. So let's just see here if we do this. What happens? <laughs> I get tired. I've done it so much now. I'm just bored of it. That actually worked out okay. Still have to kind of go through and give it its difference here. I've been watching uh, Netflix while I have, you know, while I, I'm, I'm doing work without you here. And I'm watching um, a show called Russian Doll. 
And I love the main actress. I've always dug her. I think she's just super, you know, she's just spunky. She's just, I don't know, there's something about her. I really enjoy her. Well, she's kind of badass. You know, I like her. I like her personality a lot. And I should know the name of her um, as an actress. I really should. But she's kind of one of my, kind of one of my favorite actresses, any, uh, actually. And, um, you know, I didn't really want to watch this show because it's about people dying over and over again. She dies over and over. You know, if you, if you watch the trailer, that's not giving anything away to say that. But, you know, it's a little, it's, it's a dark. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you there. But the story is, is pretty interesting. And it'll be cool to see where they end up with it and, and why. Let's see what the why is behind all of her trials. I don't know. I think I'm on episode five right now. I really am having a fun time with it. So if you're bored and need something fun to watch, uh, it's called Russian Doll. Uh, don't expect it to be a light, happy Christian story. Uh, she's a gritty New Yorker. Um, and she really does kind of have this uh, um, almost a man-like personality. You know, it's kind of it's really interesting, her grittiness, her ability, her you know, tough New Yorker persona. She's cool. But it, it's not for the lighthearted. There's a cussing. There is some nudity, but there has not been any full frontal nudity. So it's not like it's you know, Game of Thrones or anything like that. Um... Yeah, you know, definitely swearing, but yeah. You know, if 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 that's not your thing, then I would not recommend watching it. But if you want a cool, interesting story, uh, I don't know where it's going to lead, but uh, it is it is fun. I was talking with uh, one of you. And she was telling me about that she had um, seen Queen, the the movie, uh, and she blamed it on me that she can now no longer stop singing the lyrics to Queen songs, <laughs> which I was not a huge Queen fan before I saw that movie, uh, but the way that, um, you yeah, know, it just was really a, an electric movie. I really enjoyed it. I, oh, Bohemian Rhapsody, I think, is what it is. Yes. Uh, and Rami, Rami Malek did a great job. And also the, the guys, the, the band mates, they did an excellent job. It was a great, great story for sure. Okay. So I've got that gathered twigs. But here's what I'm thinking. Um, before I put anything... You know, to stabilize this, let's um, let's do the stuff that we know. Mm, that's looking really dirty. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. It's definitely giving us a red tone, and you know how I am about my metallics. This is this is a ombre vintage ombre. Let's see if I can find the. Here it is. Colorworks pigment ink. So again, this is water soluble, which we don't want. But now I have used it with two things with that uh, gathered twigs. I, you know, you don't have to just use gathered twigs. Uh, that's just what I have as far as distressed ink pads. I don't have a lot of distressed ink pads. Um, I have the smaller ones. I don't have many of the big ones. So look at that, just that cool little touch that it gives. I swear to God, just adding a little metallic into it oh, makes it so cool. But we're going to figure out how to set this too. And I'm going to do a small test spot of, uh, maybe I'm going to bring some varnish in. I've got some gloss varnish and maybe that will work well. Um, Okay, so you see the shimmer, you see the difference. I 
All right, I don't know if I need it on everything. I like it, but I don't think I have to have it. But it does give a nice... Mm. Now, it will also tone down and mellow out your colors. So if you don't want your colors to be mellowed out, don't do it. Um, I don't think I want any big blotches. But I like it, and I'm going to keep doing it because I like it. And if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have done it. All right? And just that touch of metallic can really add, you know, an incredible dimension to your piece. You didn't even realize you were missing it, right? Very light touch. I'm not doing it all over everything. We're making things grungy. We're making things cool. And now you see how all those different colors, how well they work together. If we would have just done this with this well this would have been pretty cool too though look at oh look at that coloring that happens with that so that would have been really awesome also and again that might have been better because i dig that and then let's see here yeah that's very cool so you know, I don't know if you need it. Well, that's really beautiful, though. I mean, I can't, I can't complain about that. I don't know which I like even better. So remember, this is the fired brick with the um, wild honey distress oxide, just the two colors. This is the fired brick wild honey, um, and then a blue and a purple. So, you know, you don't have to have the exact same colors that I have. That's not necessary. Use what colors that you want to use. Um, I don't want you to have to just exactly copy me or, you know, uh, to use, you know, think that that's the only thing that you can use. Just, um, you know, think of your contrasting colors. Think of, you know, what you want your background to look like. That's so cool 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 I'm just adding another couple little touches in here along the edges because we want that to be spectacular hi guys okay we're back so i take it from this to this and if you can see the absolute depth of color and uh, interest and all of those amazing things on this background. I mean, this is basically the background of that layout. Ooh, I'm gonna have to do this process in there, aren't I? I'm gonna have to go back and see what I've done with all of it, but wow. So you saw me last putting on the gold and I have saved these two pieces left. Now here. So this one doesn't have as much on it as like this guy does. Um, as this was one of the first ones that I did. So as I went along, I learned uh, more better how to get it to look the way that I really wanted it to look. All right. But it's just gorgeous. Okay, so this is archival ink, which is a permanent ink. This is um, Vermilion. It's a Ranger product. So I chose the red because I, I, you know, was thinking about, you know, the the colors of the book. The red and uh, 
you know, the, the tint thought, right? Okay. So, um, this one doesn't have any red on it. So it's the same. Hi guys. Okay. Um, you saw me basically do this the first time. So, uh, I have just been putting down, the fired brick is already down, and uh, this is the wild honey uh, over the top of it here to give us that look. All right, let's bring in some contrast. I think this blue will be a great contrast, but also uh, we'll probably want to bring in, and let's let's think about bringing in the shadows here. Get it too thick. I got it a little bit too thick there. Let's get some more. Uh... <laughs> That's <is> no good. Well, this is going to take a while, guys, so you have a pretty good handle on what I'm doing with it and uh, how I get that texture. So I'm going to cut you free um, and uh, I will be back uh, once I get all this done. And uh, then the back side also. It's a long process. It takes a lot of work, but we're getting it um, faster. You know, this is, this is coming together much faster than I had originally started to do it, which I don't know where the blue lid is. Where's our lid? Here it is, way over here. Okay. So, uh, we'll come back in a minute for you and a half hour at least to an hour for me because I've got quite a ways to go. All right. Bye. Okay. So as I learn things about this process, I am sharing them with you. So remember, I'm looking to mimic the stripe of the, um, circus tent. So here, I've made stripes with the color, and what is it telling me I need to walk? My watch keeps telling me I need to go walk. I should probably go out and walk. It would probably be a good thing to. My back and neck are really stiff from yesterday. I got a lot of stuff done yesterday. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm jumping around. So if I keep this in that stripe pattern, and kind of blend it in. It's working really nicely. And now I wish I would have done that, of course, through the whole thing. Um, I kind of really uh, am enjoying that look. Dig that though. Look how cool that is. So uh, I would suggest if you want stripes to do it in a striping motion. Makes sense. Uh, I wish I would have tried it earlier and cannot find the lid to the blue. Oh, that's right, it's being used here, just a second. 
Of course, now that I put that underneath of there to dry, and I just don't want it to um, stick, you know, because any place it's going to stick, it's most likely going to pull up, and we don't want that. But here, we don't have any stripes. Hmm. Curl. Which try to find where we had our stripes at here. Not that I want to do a ton more to this. Um, you know, I can adjust the colors later too. Well, not really. I mean, this is this is going to be kind of it. Um, all right. So, um, I guess my next step would be to uh, take a. Let's see if I can get this darkened in here. Take the gold around everything, and then to take the red around everything and oh gosh it's a long ways to go still I still have a lot of steps left here I kind of like those little splotches there I think that actually will add significantly to the interest there a little splotch a little roughness cool all right. All right. See, I wouldn't expect you guys to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. <laughs> Crazy! But look at how worth it is. You know, uh, you can make fast art or you can make good art. Sometimes fast art is good art. But sometimes... You just need to go the little bit extra mile with it, because because it's worth it. So, see, this landed on something here, so it's got this little bubble. All right, we're looking for kind of that rugged look. We are are not looking for a smooth look. However, I don't want too much of that because. I've taken a long time with this. Darn it. So I'm going to let this dry and uh, try to cover up my inks. Where's the top? Here's the top. Okay. <laughs> and let's not make that go bad. Let's not make that go bad. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> All right. I am going to go take a walk. Look at those hands. <sighs> I'm going to go check out the property, see if everything's going well. I need to do some additional work. Um, I need to see if I can find that vellum. In fact, this is probably the end of this video. I would think uh, this is plenty of information to put together for now. Oh, I should probably, oh gosh. In order to finish this, I know I need to start edging these. However, uh, I need to quit putting my fingers into my work also. <laughs> Done it all over the place here. Oh, here, this is how we can dry that. Duh. Gosh. Okay, we're going to let this dry and I will come back to it. Bye. Hi, guys. Okay, um, well, I'm wearing glasses and I can't see what I'm doing when I'm wearing glasses up close. Uh, just running the uh, gold over just to give it up that little shine again I don't know how much of this back stuff will be seen but this will be seen because that's part of the fold over and that will be seen for sure because that's part of this right
trying not to overdo it with the gold, but uh, it just adds that sparkle, that gorgeous sparkle that I love. I still haven't found my timber brown. I would rather use the timber brown over this, uh, just the plain distress ink because this guy is not very, um, not, not, not permanent ink. Permanent ink is the only way to go. Do I need to bring you guys up here? I was trying to get a light to work and I can't get any of my lights to work and it's driving me crazy. Remember this color just kind of takes everything down. It vintages it immediately. And he's gorgeous. Again, this is the uh, Gathered Twigs Distress Ink. You can use any brown that you like. I like the Walnut Stain actually a little bit better than the Gathered Twigs. But this is doing a fine job. And look how it's really picking up those brush strokes. It's given us a great texture. It's uh, blending in that gold a little bit in there. Look how beautiful that's coming out. So it calms down that really bright color very fast. You have to start with bright or well, you don't have to, but uh, I like to do that because it gives us a lot of variety and you can also, you know, manipulate the color to be what you want it to be. Okay, so that was the non-permanent ink. Now we're going to come in with the permanent like we did on these guys, which this one somehow got missed. And we're going to do him up real quick. And I'm sticking my knees underneath of me. I've got it. Scooch back in this chair, put my legs up so I don't fold them. Okay. Yeah. You see how cool that is? All right. Um, so now we just go through and here's our final edger. And I'm lightly brushing it over the top of this. Part of me still wonders if I shouldn't take uh, some varnish over this, just a quick super fast layer, um, just to set everything.
this is a Liquitex Professional High Gloss Varnish. Now, I don't know if I need to use this, but this is all really quite sticky. And I'm worried about it drying well. I'm worried about um, what happens, you know, with the whole thing. <laughs> Just worried about it. So I think that a coat of varnish, even though it will take an extra minute, of course, um, you know, to do things right or well, sometimes it takes an extra minute. And this is one of those instances. Um, this will put a high gloss varnish on it. Um, is it necessary? Uh, is it going to move things? I don't know. It is moving things. A lot. Yeah, look what it's doing though too. It's pretty cool. Can I put it on light enough that it does the job? I want to take down the sticky. I want to protect the work. Um, you know, you varnish your, your acrylic paintings. It, it is moving that ink. So just be aware that it does move things. But look what it's doing to the color. Okay. I um, have varnished all of this. And look at how cool it looks. I mean, that looks really, really beautiful. Totally stoked about it. Um... Let's see here if we can get the back side. And again, this was Liquitex Professional High Gloss Varnish. That bottle is not cheap. Um, and I had originally uh, purchased it for flow paintings, you know, to set all my flow paintings and make them all shiny and beautiful. I don't know if you need the high gloss, but I like the high gloss uh, personally. I also use a gloss... Uh, Mod Podge, I think. I don't know. I have to look at that. But this should take care of all of the stickiness. See, now it does move things. I'm having to have a very light touch with it. Or if I get too much, I, I definitely do not want to um, swipe it too many times. Just kind of let it sit on there. go I don't know if people are going to be able to tell what this is even made out of when it's all done which is perfect you know you really don't want your your medium to scream out hey this is this or this is that to me I like um, being able to manipulate it enough that uh, you know, you, you, it just looks like it's a beautiful piece of painted, uh, whatever. I think I did this side already. Did I do this side already? Uh, I don't know. So I guess I'll do a second coat. If I did, I'll have to go back through and watch the video. I think I did. I don't know. And it is really shiny and pretty. And I like it. It's, you know, it's not striped. But, yeah, that's okay. 
this I might have to go back and fix right in there, but that's going to have an image on it too. So, um, yeah, since I don't really know what images will be there, I just really can't uh, stress on that too much, right? Oh, I unplugged my phone when I was messing with these lights. I was trying to get my lights to work. Work! Good boy. Okay, so I'm going to go through and do <laughs> all of these guys. So this is taking me a full day to paint these. Um, it just does. It just does. It takes a full day. Uh, but it's going to be cool when it's done. So, uh, I think it's worth it, right? I think it's worth it. Uh, you do not have to do this step. Look what happens when you do. You know, I, I continually ask myself while I'm doing this, what else can I do to make it better? And, um, you know, I should have been done with the Mod Podge probably with this part, but, um, this will give us a cool effect. Now I have to go uh, work on images. I'll work on images tonight. I'll try to get this uploaded to you today. Or, <laughs> I'll get the video edited today and hopefully converted. And then uploading it will probably take half a day tomorrow. And I have to go to town tomorrow. go and check my mailbox and see if I have any ATCs in there. Remember, we're going to do the, um, I don't know if I can do live. Uh, I'll have to attempt it here soon. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Getting a really cool texture. Now see, it just makes a difference. Oh. On these little ones, I have to be careful though, because I don't want that um, ugly cardboard printing to come back. You know, it is a lot of extra steps, but it's cool too. You know, uh, other things we could have done. I could have used the papers like I had thought of. The um... look at that. The uh, uh, popcorn bags. But you could have used the scrapbook papers that we used in the other ones. We could have used a lot of different things uh, to cover this. I mean, you could have probably just done it with newsprint and sprayed it with the um, spray inks. That would have come out cool. Uh, that would have actually probably looked really cool. So just because I'm deciding to do it this way does not mean that you have to do it this way. They had a little bit much on there. And I don't stop until it is as good as I can make it. All right. And you guys do not need to take a day to paint your backgrounds. The coloring is so beautiful in there. Oh, you got quite the glare here. Beautiful. I don't want it to stick together. I guess I could stand those up. Stand these up. 
Okay, guys, I'm just going to keep painting, and uh, we will check back soon. Uh, it's funny, I think I said just a little while ago that this will be the last uh, part of this video, and uh, maybe now this will be the last part of it. <laughs> I don't know. It's also picking up the gold and distributing the gold through all of the varnish. So that is another thing to be aware of. That is gonna give a really cool iridescence when it's done. Okay, we'll chat later. Um, if I don't see you after this, y'all have a great night, okay? It is uh, almost 4.30 on February the 11th. I've been working on these all day long. All right, bye.